Hey everybody and welcome back. We're back on old Pickle the Bus, but I thought I'd show this. If you hang out till the end, I'm going to show some more of this piece. This is uh, me throwing in art at the beginning to entice you to stay till the end. It's a little lit end table slash coffee table plasma cut out of something that was kind of cool in itself. So if you don't want to watch the Pickle the Bus, fast forward to the end. If you want to watch Pickle the Bus and want to see this, hang out till the end. All right, let's get to it. Did you hear that woodpecker, Maggie? You hear him? Yeah. So while the woodpeckers are busy and the snow is starting to fall today, we have a, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just starting to hit. We have a 25 degree day here, and the next couple of weeks it's supposed to be sub-zero temperatures. So I'm gonna attempt to take off one of these side doors off of Pickle the Bus. I have uh, the frame pieces ready to make for back here on the frame horn, but it's gonna be really too cold for me to come out here and work on that the next couple days. So we are gonna attempt to get one of these doors off. Maybe we can work on that, taking that down to original paint, hopefully, and maybe fixing some of the sheet metal areas. I have no idea what we're getting into here. <laughs> you can see it looks pretty gnarly there. And I got to redo this latch and things like that. So we've got a little bit to work on inside. You can see that's that's not needed. <laughs> so that needs some love. And I don't know, sorry about that, I don't know that these are even going to come out of there, but we're going to attempt to get them out. I haven't treated them with anything. Originally I did. You can see the oil stain we retreated the door originally to get it open. I haven't done anything since then. So let's see what kind of damage we can do. A nice little hippie window cut in all the way around old pickle up here on top. That's lovely of someone to do that for me. I do think they left enough metal for us to work with though. Work in a piece there. So, all right, let's see what kind of stuff we can break over here. Cursed myself, didn't I? Oh, I got one of them without too bad of a fight. I got that pin down there to loosen up. I'm going for the pins rather than the screws because I figured they'd be easier. I know. <laughs> if the pin is easier, you know you're in trouble. We're going to heat this hinge up and try and knock the pin out on that one. I didn't take the, whoops, I didn't take the one out of the bottom all the way, but it is loose. I've got it up about a quarter inch. out here. Woo. Seems like that's all I've been saying lately, but just a little bit on the cool side. on the inside of the hinge because I figured the V of the hinge it might trap some of that heat. It was really cold out here. The outside it's not gonna it's just gonna all come off. Plus the damage might be a little bit left if I do it on the inside. Be working right at you. Let me go on the other side. Oh, where's my other beater? Pardon me. Let me heat it up again, and I'm gonna actually move you on the other side so we can shut this door. Be easier to get to. Now, it is really starting to come down. It's starting to pile up a little bit. This one, the lower hinge popped out real quick. Heated it, gave it a couple good hits, and it came right out. The top one, however, is giving me fits. But uh, I'm gonna go in for right now, get warmed up. Come back out tomorrow and we'll give that one a try. I think we can probably get it, but bottom one came out super easy. 
It'll be a fun day going to work tomorrow. <laughs> Get some of the white stuff. It's blowing in so bad that just me working in that far in the carport <laughs> get covered. So we're going to call it a night. As I was hitting that, I kept thinking, what are the chances I can get that out of there without a busted window? And I think we've got it. And I have laid down my... Took a lot of heat on that upper one. And with it being 15 degrees out here, that didn't help. I'm at a weird angle. Try not to hit you. Let me back you up. Can you see from there? Or you just get rotisserie from there? Oh. Gotta hit it weird for fear. I hit the window. I gotta leave my hand in there as a protector. Whew. Fortunately, these are not, or at least it's if it is, it's all rotted away. The only part of this pen that appears to be a taper is that top part, which looks like it had grooves in it up on top. So it has a little mushroom and then there's a little spot that's good. Originally probably had grooves in it. It doesn't have grooves in it anymore. <laughs> but uh, looks like it did have at one point. I wonder Probably still too hot to do any good. Well, Maybe I can put this through there. There we go. It's gonna be hot. <laughs> there we go. One door. Loosened. Let's see if we can get it off of there. I'm going to move you around to the other side over here. You can see we got some of the, uh, the white stuff. We got about, I think it's about five or six inches, something like that. Nothing serious, just kind of makes things a little inconvenient. I uh, can't run a snow day today. So we've been out playing in the snow. The lower one I've already had off. I kind of took it off and wiggled. Try not to break a window. Not a window on this door. <laughs> window on the front door. Come on. It's still hot. <laughs> Watch your hands there. One door off of there. I figure that'll give the neighbor dog a place to stay for the winter. This one I'm gonna leave on there I think for now. I guess I could go ahead and take it off. We'll just leave it on there for now. I don't have, really have a whole lot of room in the shop to put two of these. 
I say shop. My, my heated space is pretty small. So we'll just leave this one on and I'll go ahead and put the, keep a uh, C-clamp up there. Just put that C-clamp back up there and hold that one closed. And we got one off and we'll go work on that. We'll get that one fixed and we'll come out and take the other one off. Sweet. We're gonna have some serious uh, repair on both of these, but this one's actually busted right at the body line, which that's good for us because it makes a repair if you can see that, makes repair a lot easier. Won't be as obvious. Yeah, she's busted right at the body line seam. So again, I don't know what I'm getting into with, with this one, but I can assure you it's not gonna be good. Well, we got that door inside, it's a couple days later, and looking at it overall, it's in pretty decent shape. If you go to look at it, I mean, underneath here, this is all original paint underneath this lighter stuff is not but this is so that's kind of cool there was a door panel so they had door panels up to this rib line you can see the screw holes for the original door panel that was in and then up here a lot of the buses had the windows but this is a panel bus so it has this brace that's up bracing that piece in and then down here it looks like this whole bottom section has been welded in by someone before so I'll probably go ahead and we'll grind that off eventually and take a peek at that. Probably go ahead and redo that. We're probably going to peel all this skin off of here. So probably what I'll do first is go around and rip off all of this. Uh, <laughs> what's, what once was a uh, door seal. <laughs> we'll get all of that out of there. Because I'm going to replace all of that anyway. And take a peek down inside what it looks like. Oh, there's some original dub blue peeking through. Huh. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then we'll get this uh, door mechanism, this locking mechanism off of here, and I'll make sure we get that service really well and oiled and working properly. Uh, we got to keep this, though, because these are kind of hard to come by. And the way that it's shaped, and this pin has to drop down in the floor, and that one up there has to go up into the ceiling, into the roof of the bus. We got to make sure we don't lose those suckers. We gotta make sure they're working right. What happens is when you turn the door lock, those two come in, those two pieces. So let me get the camera set up here and we'll get to kind of taking this apart. And then I wanna start stripping some paint and seeing if we can get down to brass tack, so to speak, and see what we're dealing with inside there. <laughs> Not much left of that part of the rock. But overall, it's pretty solid. I'm shocked. These doors are pretty heavy, too. I was shocked at how heavy they were. I've had the double cab door off before, and I don't think it's as heavy as this one. And it has glass in it. All right, let me get you set up, and we'll get busy on this one. What are the chances we can get any of those out without treating them with anything? They don't look terrible. Let's try it, see what happens. Let's see, there was a small Phillips. I think I got that. Yep, big Phillips and a straight. That one came out easy. Almost too easy. Is there a nut behind that? Am I gonna undo that and a nut's gonna drop off? Hmm, let's do these first. Somebody that knows is screaming at me right now. That one came out pretty easy. We're smarter, not harder, right? Oh, this is probably too big. Oh, that might work. Gotcha. Those, I uh, use those for hitch, when you install a hitch ball. That's a hitch ball wrench. Now you gotta take a door. I think that has to come out maybe, and then the handle drops out. That's typically how they work. 
That one came out really easy. What's wrong with you, Pickle? You mean easy to get along with today? Or not. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Yeah. We work on that and get that assembly all off of there and we'll take a peek at how it's assembled. For the record, uh, these do not have a nut under them. This piece here is threaded. Once I got that kind of loose, I could pull it out a little bit and I could see there was nothing under it. So I went ahead and took those out and we're gonna try and get that the door handle out. That was pretty easy. Can't believe that wasn't more seized up. That whole thing was pretty easy to get apart. And when the door locks, there's a little pin. You can see that little rusted circle there. You put the key in and you turn it and that pin comes out and it locks in that slot that's on this little collar. So your door is locked. And then that, the collar has a notch area that fits into that door latch. So the whole system is pretty simple. I was just looking over on the door over here. It, I don't think that's ever been off the bus. What do you think? That looks pretty much OG to me. These pins, or the rods that drop down, are pretty well seized up. Can't, I'm gonna have to tap on them to get them out. I'm just hoping I don't. Let's hope I don't break. <laughs> Let's hope we don't break something here. Oh, that one came actually out pretty easy. One of them. Yeah, that one's pretty rusted. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see kind of where it was seized against the side. Pretty simple, the way they're made. I probably should mark which one's the top and the bottom. Are they the same length? Nope, the top is taller. There's what they, the difference. Well, I was uh, trying to get, thinking about cutting that apart, and I thought, well, I'll just spray it with some uh, free all or WD-40 or something, and see what it can get. And uh, I think I've got it working correctly. So you can watch the slit up here. So they're both moving now. Yep, put that right in your way, didn't I? So I think that's fixed. We'll keep soaking it, but. That's a win. It's one less piece I have to replace. <laughs> yeah, it actually, it, I just went around, so there's a gap. I just went around with that straw that's on the Freehawk can and got it real close to that. And most of it went inside there. And then I sprayed down where the slits are. And uh, it took it a couple turns, but they freed right up. I'm surprised they weren't broken in there. Whatever mechanism makes them work. Cool. I like easy fixes like that. The whole bus was that way. We'd be in, we'd be in business. So that is fixed. Let's rip off this stuff around the outside. When you bring things back like that, that's the part I really enjoy. You feel like you beat the system a little bit. I don't have to order that part since it's gonna work gonna cooperate. Doesn't always happen. Looks like this up here has been on fire. Hmm. <laughs> Wonder who did that. I probably should have pulled that out before I, before I torched that. Oops a daisy. most of that out of there now. I'm just kind of going around with the wire wheel and uh, 
not harsh, just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Before we flip it over, I wanted to mention that inside here, I don't know if I'll be able to get this or not, there's a track. I don't know if you can see that square track inside where the door, those little pins that go top and bottom that pop out, there's a track inside there that runs up. And so we need to make sure if and when we cut down in here, we don't damage that. The one up front, I don't know if you can see it up here or not. Yeah, it's hard to get the light in there, but you can see that track there. And whoever repaired down here, it looks like they did a pretty decent job preserving that because the screw hole is actually still there too. So hopefully we can get that all back like it should go. But I just wanted to mention that. So don't just go cutting on that because there's a track inside there. So much like the... Uh, the rear deck lid and the other parts of the bus that I have stripped the paint off of. There is Bondo, or there are Bondo places throughout that we're just, I'm just going along and kind of picking off what I can, remove it, and I can see Dove Blue poking through right there, and right there, and right there. So I know this metal here is original bus metal, so we can pretty much determine that this lower two and a half, three inches has been uh, just kind of grafted. <laughs> And not, they didn't do a great job on it and then just bonded over it. So it's just asking for a problem later on. And it's not cut straight. It's all bent up. So we'll go through and I'll do my best to fix all that. The, the positive note is the hinges are very solid. So I'm not going to have to rebuild those portions of the door, which th that would be a serious, I'd have to cut open the whole inside of the door. But the hinges are super strong. I don't think they're rusted out at all. Both of them are that way, which is really nice. Since this is a high hinge door, it'd be kind of hard to come by. Uh, another door, so we would be rebuilding this one and that would stink. So let's hope the other door is just as good as this one. So I'll go through along here and I'll pick off what I can of that. But yeah, there's a, I don't know how big of a gap, Can measure it, it's over a quarter inch. <laughs> Yeah, there's a quarter inch gap between that back panel and this top panel of whoever skinned that over. So butt welding was not something they wanted to do, apparently. Just use some Bondo. It'll be good. It'll be fine. Not fine. Not for me, anyway. I've been kind of going through and just knocking off the loose areas. I got that Bondo off to where it kind of starts to come into the original paint, and then I stopped because what happens there is when you start scraping on it when it's on the original paint, it wants to pick it up. So we'll just use Goof Off to get that Bondo off. Goof Off will take that off of there. Uh, the places up here where it's just kind of flaky, I just went along. Goof Off works a little bit better, I found, if you have a spot for it to kind of get under it. So I just went and knocked off everything that I could easily with a razor blade. And then we've got this dent here. Uh, there is a stopper that is not showing up very well on camera. Let me take you out of the stand. I was going to just leave that. Yeah, that is not showing up at all. <laughs> Trust me, there's a huge dent right here. Isn't that funny? Not showing up at all. Uh, I was going to leave that stopper on there, but I just barely bumped it and it broke anyway. I kind of like the uh, patina look to it so to speak. But I'm going to use the, uh, the stopper bolt that's in there to kind of pull, hopefully pull that dent out of there. This is in that rib. Let me take this off and I'll show you why we can't uh, really get to that very well. There's a body line. You can see right here the bump in the body line. And unfortunately where that dent is, is right there where that brace is inside the door. So that's why when you see dents on buses right there, they don't come out. <laughs> and 
And we've kind of got the chance to do that now. So before I start stripping paint and I'm down to the original, you can see it a little better there or not. Uh, we'll go ahead and try and pull that dent out of there. I don't know if we'll be successful or not, but it's worth a shot. Probably with a slide hammer, I could pull that right out. But I think I'm just going to try sticking a pair of vice grips on it and giving it a good whack. I might be able to put a uh, something that's kind of J-shaped on the backside and push up. What we can't get here. It's close. We're getting it. Let's go slow. Got you right in the way, don't I? Maybe over here. Got a little bit of a dip right there. Just kind of using the weight of the door. I decided I'd try this method. Seems to be working pretty well. You know, metal has a memory. It's going to go back to where it was originally. If you can just find the relief point. Really close. There's a, a little bit of a dip still right there. Kind of hear it change in sound. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks pretty good. There's still a little bit right there, and I don't think I can pull that up because I think that's right where that uh, brace on the back side of the door. Yeah, that's right where you can see where it's pulling. I don't want to hammer it too much more because it's going to make a square or a rectangle pattern around it. This one here, I don't know. I don't know if we can get that out or not. And this one here, unless I drill it and pull it out. Slide hammer probably would have got that out a little easier. But it's outside and I didn't feel like digging for it out there. I'm happy with that. A little bit of a dip right there. Give it a little bit of character. I might work on this one just a little bit. Unfortunately, that you can't get much back there to pry on. Well, I found that a crescent wrench, uh, working it under there and hitting it as I moved it back, worked really well. Uh, it's not perfect. It's such an awkward place to try and hit, but it's much better than it was. It's almost straight. So it's just a junky old bus going to continue on with getting some of this paint off of here. I think I'm done kind of working those out. Got you got some snacks for us? What you got? Awesome. I'll be right in. Thanks, pal. I washed this out. Okay. Good deal. So bad. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I washed it out and I don't have soap in it anymore. Okay. Good deal. Thanks. Just thought I'd go ahead and drill out these rivets and take this plastic out of here since we're going to need to kind of clear this edge up anyway. And uh, some of these are copper. That's a copper one there. It's 
tell you how glad I am to see that go. Those hadn't been cut in there in the first place, but at least they left metal. We never cut them in, left metal to apply Daddy, new metal. Stop to. chasing me! You know you're on film, Mr. B. Yeah, but I'm chasing Man, I'm me. Chasing you. Let's get I'm some of this food. Oh, I'm trying to eat it. You're trying to eat. Let's I'm get some of this. Okay, well, let's get some of this OG paint to show. What do you say? Why did it look awful? I busted it out. Why did you do that? I don't need it in there anymore. We're going to put metal in there. Woo. What do you say? We go around and work all the little areas that we can get something under. And then we put some of that uh, goof off on there. What do you think about that? I'm going to go ahead and get started on kind of stripping this paint back. I use this product. It's called Goof Off. It is graffiti remover and buy the one that has the graffiti written on it. The other one doesn't seem to work as well for this type of project. Uh, I use just a variety of Scotch-Brite pads. I found that the blue and the green actually work pretty well. And then I have the black purplish colored one also. Uh, depending on where you get, sometimes it's easier to get one of those in there. The Bondo area, I'm going to use a metal paint scraper to kind of help me out there. The Goof Off will take that out of there. It just takes it multiple layers. Um, if you're going to try this you know, on a project that you're working on, experiment in a small area first. This is what I found works for me. You can also use Easy Off Oven Cleaner. Some people find that that works a little bit better. Or Acetone, my brother's car, uh, 1960 Vert on Instagram. Uh, his car was completely covered in a paint and he used just straight up acetone. And he bought it in bulk and uh, got all of the OG paint on his car to show up. And he didn't use this because this actually stripped his car back. So try it in an area you don't care about first. And then if it, it seems to work, you can go get yourself a can. It costs about seven bucks a can. And I'm keeping track of how many cans we've had to buy uh, for Old Pickle. And at the end, I'll let you know. I'm not going to film this. I've done it before. I'll put a link here. You can go check it out wherever that link shows up. And uh, look at what I did in the past. But for right now, let's see what kind of damage we can do on this door. I did fail to mention if you can't uh, keep it off your hands, which I'm not so sure I can. I wear gloves. And uh, this one does is kind of a foaming rather than a runoff. Kind of a gel, foaming gel. And I'm just going to work it in two separate sections. I'm going to work down here where the bondo is and get that coated. And then I'm going to go work up at the top of the where the window was cut. And we're going to kind of work our way back to the middle. This down here will have to sit a little bit longer. Get that bondo off of there. But it will come off. I'll bring you back when we're peeling off some paint. Yeah, I've been at it for about a half hour now, and we're starting to get down. The bondo takes a while to come off, so we we'll just keep working that corner. We're starting to get down to the paint. I thought I'd just stop a little bit and kind of show you how I kind of work it in stages. This has seven layers of paint. It's got the black. There are, in some places, a brown and then an orange, which I assume was a primer and then a paint. And then there's this uh, kind of iridescent, metallic-looking teal. There is a yellow, a red, and a gray. There's a little bit of the red poking through there. The red and the yellow kind of come off in the same layer. And then the dark blue is the last layer that comes off on top of the dub blue. So it's more than, more than three layers <laughs> of paint I'm taking off here. This iridescent or metallic uh, teal is the hardest one to get off. And that's the layer I got off here. So now we're down to like what was a primer, I assume. And so with the goof off on there, you can see it just comes right off of there. So once I get down to kind of the last layer, there's a dark blue on the bottom of the door and then this kind of tan on the top part of the bus. Or white, whatever it was, probably primer. 
probably why it comes off so easy. So we'll probably need another coat of goof off up here. The blue's coming through though. So let me finish working that top part right there. And then I'll bring you back and show you what we've got. We've got some damage right here, some scrapes, probably from a sander. You can see that or not. I did not do that, so probably sander. Yeah, let me finish getting that top part done and I'll bring you back and show you what we're looking at. And then how I do this is I just start, as I kind of get an area where I've almost got it done, I jump down and start applying uh, the uh, goof off to that area so that I can then start working. You can see how it kind of starts to crack it in certain areas. And that's why I said it works best when you can get up under it. So if you have a, a razor blade, you can kind of work some areas. I'm going to left hand it here. But if you can kind of work some areas where you can get up under it, it works a lot better. So that's why I said I wanted to go through and kind of knock off all the areas. And you can see here where the yellow is coming through. That's where it's starting to work that up under there. And once you kind of get it started up under an area, it comes up a lot easier. So I'll work that and bring it back. Yeah, I think probably two more spray-ons of uh, goof off, except for maybe down here in the Bondo area, but it's getting there for sure I'll bring a you know I've been at it about two hours now probably because you have to kind of keep reapplying it it, uh, it takes a while So we're down to the layers now where it's coming off pretty easily. But it does take a while. It's not something you just do overnight. You have to, you have to really want that OG paint to come back. So we're almost there. Getting there. This takes a, takes a lot of love. <laughs> You have to really love a project and really want it to put that kind of time in it. And you can see I'm not being gentle. I'm not protecting the original paint areas. I figure if it comes off, we'll just go back and paint it back on. But as far as this project's concerned, this was the way to go. I like it. Let me keep at it a bit and uh, bring it back again. So we've got everything now but the Bondo uh, pieces off. And I'm pretty happy with it. Can't really see a whole lot of it for what it really is under there. I'll take it out and hose it off. I think it's about zero degrees outside, so, <laughs> so that ought to go well. But we'll take it off and soap and water it. Kind of hose it off a little bit. You'll be able to see kind of what it looks like. Uh, I don't know how much more I'm going to do down on this Bondo area. I got a treatment or a spray on it right now. It took an entire can and then some. You can see it kind of pulling it off of there. It scrapes off really easy, but that is just so thick down there. It just takes multiple attempts to get that off. So I'll probably quit after I scrape that off and go hose it down, kind of see what we've got. And then along the edge, uh, get a light here. Along the edge, I need to do some work on it. We're going to stop her right now, but you can see we're getting some of the dub blue back, but I still got a little bit of uh, paint and garbage on there. And then I've got to go get some metal. I don't have anything thin enough to weld in there or down here. So we'll have to go grab some metal in the next couple days and get that done, or at least attempt to get it done. We're definitely going to have to uh, wheel some a little bit there because if I just put a flat piece of metal in that's not flat there. 
So we'll have to use the English wheel and kind of give that some shape. Not too much though. Same down here too. I think the door kind of looks like it kind of curves in. Maybe not. Maybe it's just an optical illusion. Kind of goes this way too, it looks like. So I will go spray that off and then I'll bring you back and we can take a peek at it. Well, there it is, all kind of cleaned up. I don't know about you, but I think if we lay a good wax on that, that's going to clean up pretty nice. Um, I don't know that I'll fix that bottom piece right away or the top. I probably will go ahead and get the metal for it, though, and kind of play around with it. I'm probably going to cut this out so it's a, it's a squared off corner where it, rather than a rounded. Because what happens when you got a rounded corner like this, it's really hard to control the heat and keep it from warping. If we have a corner, it'll be a little easier. And the way I do it is I have a uh, my air from my compressor going the whole time I'm laying that piece in there. So we hopefully won't distort the paint too much. And then obviously we'll have to kind of Fotina blend the centerpiece in there. So I'm going to call that good for now. We may play around with that metal piece later this week. I'm not sure. There's a few little spots I got to go back and take off like that dark blue paint area there. There's some up around the uh, where the stopper goes. I'll go ahead and scrape off in the edges. But for the most part, that's what we're looking at for doors. That came back okay. You know, you get into some of this stuff up here where you're not too sure what it's going to do, but it came out all right. And look at that. The shine on that paint is even pretty good. I, again, I've done nothing to this. I hosed it off, washed it with soap and water, and that's what came back. Even the cancer spot in the middle is kind of interesting. So we are going to call that a win. <laughs> it's all about small victories on a project like this. Yeah, you, know, you got little places like this where I'll have to go in. and You can see, maybe you can, right there. No, you can't really see it. How about right here? You can see it right there pretty well. So the paint was all picked off of the paint that was on it. And that area there, that's the little rectangle shape was exposed all this time and then this other stuff was was not. So there's a slight different color change in a couple different areas. You can see down in there. But other than that, not too bad. Came back okay. Even the dents look pretty decent that I popped out of the... There's still a few in there, but looks better than it did anyway. Well, with that, everybody, I think I'm gonna call this one done. As promised, there will be some art at the end. So if you want to hang around for that, I'll see you there. And if not, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.